Hey, how's it going everybody? Um, today, I just wanted to do a little update here on my Balance Street PvP guide. Um, first off, I just want to show some credibility for this. Um, I hit 2450 in threes. Um, this is, what day is it today? It is the 23rd. I hit that on the 21st. Tanked a little bit since then. Um, playing with some bads, obviously. <laughs> AK Corey. Um, here is my twos rating. I'm 2150 as balanced druid. Um, pretty high win rate, 70 wins, 9 losses. And I'm currently the highest rated player in solo queue right now. Um, I haven't played a lot of RBGs, mostly just like 10 boomy RBGs with the, uh, the viewers, so my win rate's not insane with this. Um, but everything else, pretty top tier. Um, now, I want to explain a lot of things in this video and this will be more of a long form video so this will be I, I should just get right into it um so I, i'm just gonna get right into it so let's go over talents real quick there's a lot of talent builds and it can get really confusing if you want the cookie cutter build then you just run aoe and run this if you just want a cookie cutter build right away you'd run this build um other scenarios where you run this build will be in uh, Blade's Edge map if you're fighting a Caster Cleave on Blade's Edge or if you're playing RBGs. Otherwise, just never run this build. RBGs or Blade's Edge in Arena, 3v3 only. Um, basically, what this build does is you spawn Starbursts and you're playing Starfall here. And your Arcanic Pulsar procs a ton off of your abilities. So, like, you're, you're running a maximum AP regeneration build which in turn allows you to proc such an alignment for 12 seconds very often basically every other eclipse um so yeah there's that build um and we're just going to go over the builds real quick and then i'll show you how to do damage with each build um so then we also have our single target build so this build we're not going to be ever playing starburst we're going to be high winds basically every single game with this build. Um, this is what you're gonna play in solo queue. Um, if you fight a Warlock or a Shaman, then you wanna switch from this build to single target decurse, which is just, you drop the Typhoon thing, you drop a Vigil and you drop one of your well Hounds. So you can pick up, remove cor corruption, remove curse, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's the only difference. Um, now I basically want to allow you guys to understand why this build is the best build right now. I don't think there's another build with the recent changes to Balanced Druid, um, which I'll cover a little bit here. So Soul of the Forest, this got nerfed. Um, you gained slightly more Astral Power from Wrath than you used to. But Starfire, instead of doing 150% increased damage, it does 60% increased damage. And it gets reduced uh, beyond each target. Um, so this isn't very great now. Soul of the Force is an easy drop for Stellar Innovation. Um, another thing I want to point out is Umbral Intensity, Umbral Brace used to be kind of good. But with the loss of our Force set, our new tier set does not have casted damage which was really huge last time and we also don't have the free um surge or starfall with 20 percent increased damage so basically soul the force not really worth umbral embrace definitely you don't want to go one in here because if you go umbral embrace and you get interrupted you will get locked out on astral power or astral which will lock you out on everything which is very risky you don't really want to do often um if at all so intensity we're just not running um and then here's the other thing so you could go orbit breaker you could go radiant moonlight however if you go one you kind of got to go the other um and there's not an easy drop to run that so this is kind of what we're rocking here we're going shrooms we're going dragon and now you could go stellar flare however wild sur surges will increase your cast damage by about 13%. Um, 
This is because your cast of damage will crit 7.5% increased damage. So like crits do 50% in PvP. And this will increase your crit on your cast of damage by 15%. So basically you do um 7.5% increased damage with this talent. And then this will increase that by 80% when it crits, which will bring it up to 13% roughly increased damage. Um and then Stellar Innervation, this is really good now. Now that we're running Smolder, uh, Smolder isn't that good, but there's not really a better option. You don't want Umbral Embrace, and Intensity is basically useless. Um, so we're going Smolder here. And then I also want to show a couple things with our buffs that we received. So we gained 6 AP from using Sunfire, same with Moonfire, and then 10 from Wrath and 12 from Starfire. So, this is a lot more Astro Power than we're used to. We're used to getting two Astro Power every Sunfire, and same with Moonfire. Um, so, this build is just insane. Also, one thing I want to point out is the reason we're not going Elune's Guidance. So you could do this. Um, but I played a bunch of arenas, and what ended up happening is if you run Stellar Innervation, you get so much Astro Power now that you're overcapping the whole time. So you could solve this by doing this, right? You could solve that. That way you don't overcap. You have 20 more AP. Um, but you could also just solve it running this, which is more burst, and you kind of need more burst in PvP. Especially Star Surge does not hit that hard in PvP. So having this extra burst with Balance of All Things is very, very nice. Um, and it actually works out very well because Illumis Guidance actually doesn't get much value because you end up overcapping AP. Um, and I can show that really quick here, in case people don't believe me. Um, so this is like the scenario in PvP. So when you press Incarn with Sailor Innervation, your dots, since you're both Eclipse, will give you 12 AP per. So in PvP, while you're dotting things, you're dotting multiple targets. Um, let me turn my nameplates back on. We're dotting multiple targets. Say this guy gets dispelled. If, I, if he got dispelled and he's low HP and I want to kill him, I have to dot once, dot twice, and then surge, and I'm just over capping there. Um, but if I'm a Loon's Guidance, I just use more AP, which actually works out well, and I get more bursts with Bounce of All Things. So I, I just don't want to use a Loon's Guidance. Um, so I'll leave that, go back here. Um, so that is the new talent build. Normal Druid talents as, as usual. I'm gonna go Vigil if I'm not Decurse. Um, and PvP talents, these ones always stay the same. I don't ever change these now. I don't think it's ever worth running Thorns into Melee Cleave. I think this is just the best. Um, sometimes if, if you fight a Melee Cleave with like an Arsham on the enemy team, um, you can opt to run Moon and Stars over High Winds, and there's like a bug right now, and I have a video on that. Um, it's one of my most recent ones. And then, yeah, so those are the talents. And now let's just go over some damage rotation. So... In PvP, your damage rotation isn't the same as PvE. <clears throat> so, basically in PvP, there are risky casts, and there are also not-so-risky casts. So, something that's risky to cast is Wrath. Something that's not risky is Starfire. Um, the reason that is, is if you get kicked on Wrath, you can't skin, you can't clone, you can't renewal can't beam you can't do a lot of things a lot of your like really good things you need to be doing like off cooldown you can't really do so if somebody can't kick you or you're pretty sure they're not going to you can cast wrath to enter eclipse um it doesn't matter don't worry about doing aoe or single target you cast wrath to enter eclipse if somebody's not gonna interrupt you and then you generally cast Starfire to enter Eclipse if it if it's just like you got Instaprox. If you have Instaprox, you use Starfire. Otherwise, you use Wrath. Um, another scenario is if you are going to look for a Cyclone and you don't have Instaprox of Starfire, if you're looking to Cyclone soon, you want to cast Wraths because, or you want to cast Starfires. Because if you want to Cyclone soon, if you get kicked out on Wrath, then what that means is one, you can't Cyclone, and two, now you have to like start over and like get start two Starfires out where you could have just cast Starfires. 
Because if they kick the Starfire, then you just rat, you just um, Cyclone, and everything's chill. So, basically, you want a Starfire if a melee team is training you and you have procs, or, um, yeah, that's basically the only time. And then otherwise, you just use Wrath. Because once you use Wrath and you get Eclipse, you can go in for Cyclones, and while you're in there with Eclipse up and getting clones, you'll get Starfire procs, because they'll probably hit you and try to push you out. Um, so, yeah, even if you're single targeting, sometimes getting your Starfire, Eclipse is good by like Wrathing far away and then Starfire is pretty good. <clears throat> Another thing about Eclipse is if you have a melee cleave training you, you don't want a hard cast on them. So like if a melee cleave is training me and I don't have Eclipse up and I'm not getting procs, the only cast I'm going to do is Starfire. Never, ever, ever, literally in a million years, ever cast Wrath when melee have kicks available even just kind of ever like it's just it's so bad because you want to be star firing and using your your solar lockout for your cyclones so just don't cast don't hard cast with melee training you it's just never worth it um i would look to clone them get distance and then attack them it's just one wrath is gonna hit for nothing compared to a more like a Templar's Verdict for 130k. Like, they're just going to be slamming you. So it's just completely not worth it. You just want to keep your distance at all time into melee. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What are the other things? So, damage rotation. Outside of, like, the PvP differences, um, your number one priority is going to be your dots. Then not overcapping Astral Power. Um, and then... You want to stay in Eclipse, so that's the third, stay in Eclipse. And then the fourth is you want to keep your Rattled Stars up. So this will reduce the cost of Star Surge and increase its damage. And you can stack it up to two times. Um, so yeah, just try to keep that up. Don't overcap on AP, as you can see here. It's really easy now because you get a lot of Astral Power. So with, with Stellar Innovation, you just get so much AP, and they buffed all our abilities AP, so it's really easy to keep this up. And they made it longer, so this lasts for a little bit longer, a little bit less powerful, but it's it's very good. Um, <clears throat> you can throw Shrooms now and then. Um, but as you can see, like if I'm just parsing, this thing never falls, because as soon as this thing falls, then like I, just, I lose a lot of damage, and it costs more Ash Power for my next Star Surge, and it does less damage. So... Yeah, you want to try to keep that up. If if you're playing arenas, sometimes you just can't keep it up, and that's okay. Like, it's really okay if it falls down, but if you're trying to do big damage, it's a huge mistake not to keep this up. Like, if you're trying to counter pressure and this is not staying up, you're you're playing really bad. Like, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something very wrong if you're trying to counter pressure somebody, especially if you have inner Karn up and you're trying to, like, pump them super hard. Um... So another thing with the damage, uh, you just want to use wild mushrooms on pillars. Because, <clears throat> like, say all I can see is this training dummy. If I wild mushroom, it's going to hit every other training dummy. <clears throat> Same thing happens with my starfire um, and my, my sunfire. So if people are on the pillar and you just hit a shroom on somebody, you can get a ton of AoE damage with that mushroom. Um... So yeah. Um, next thing we have is our burst rotation. So when you're trying to burst somebody, like our small burst, this is like your intermediate burst. What you're gonna wanna do is there's a couple ways that it's all about ramping up your damage. So like you wanna get dots out for sure. That's you never burst without dots out. Now you have options here. You can Pre-Surge, Shroom, Fury of Loon, Surge, Surge, Starfire, Starfire, Surge, Starfire, Surge. Like, that's one go. Um, but you notice how I pre-Surge there? That way I can get my Rattled Stars up. Um, so that's, the pre-Surge is pretty important if you want to do, like, maximum DPS. Because that'll straight up just, like, your Surges just do 16% more damage if you get to that 2 stack on it. Um, next thing we have 
is our massive burst with Incarn. So um, we'll wait for our cooldowns here. I want to show a macro while we wait for our cooldowns. Um, <clears throat> my Fury of a Loon, I have... I have Warrior Balloon in it and Nature's Vigil. So every time I'm bursting, since I go like pre surge into Fury Balloon, into Double Surge, into Starfire, generally, um, the Warrior Balloon I just macroed in. It, it's not really like that impactful, but it's just nice to have it macroed and ready to go. Um, so let's, let's try our, our Incarn Burst. So we get our dots up, right? You don't have to be in Eclipse if you're doing your Incarn Burst. Um, we just get dots up, throw a Surge, Fury of a Loon, Shroom, Incarn, Surge, 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 Starfire, Surge, maybe throw a Shroom, throw another Starfire, Surge, Shroom, Surge. See, I'm keeping this up too. If this falls while you're doing that initial burst, it's, it kind of sucks. Like, if you're getting CC'd, then that's fine. If it falls when you're getting CC'd, okay. But if it falls when you're not getting CC'd, it's really bad. So you want to make sure that that stays up the whole entire time, your Rattled Stars. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to set that up, what I have to track it down here as well. Um, I just got to wait for my Dragon to despawn. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. I got a sub. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I got I got to wait for my dragon. My dragon's going insane. Um. Okay. All right, man. <clears throat> okay, we have another dragon. We have another dragon. Okay, this guy should he should be gone in like five seconds here. I'm pretty sure. Let's see here. Come on. Ain't no way. There's just no way. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so <clears throat> to set up that thing, you just tell me when. And so what I do to open all this up is slash TMW to open tell me when. And for you, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this. You're gonna see, you're gonna see this. When you install tell me when, you're gonna see this. What you do is you right click one of the boxes Go to icon type, buff and debuff, what to track, rattled, rattled stars. So rattled, not rattled the stars, but rattled. The other one might work, but I don't think so. Go that again. Show timer, show timer text, invert shading. Then we're pretty much good. The only thing you can do here is for mine, I have time worn dream binder as the texture. So that's how it looks like this, because that's like the old way how it used to look in Shadowlands. Um, but if I hit OK, slash TMW again. Um, now if I surge, you'll see it shows up right here. So that's how I track it. I, <clears throat> I think it's pretty essential that you have that, because it's just part of your basic damage rotation. It's like a button on your bar you need to manage. So you definitely cannot min-max that if you're looking at your buffs up, up here. It's just not going to happen. It's just straight up not going to happen. Um, so let's see. I got to delete this. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll delete it later. Um, so now let's look at... We did our single target damage rotation. Let's look at this AoE build again. So in RBGs, how are we doing this? Um, so this build is really simple. Um, you can run this in PvP if you want, in arenas if you want to. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best because... The issue with Starfall build is if I'm in line of sight of these targets, watch what happens. I hit them all with my Starfall. <clears throat> and that's great. Like we hit them all with our Starfall if we're in line of sight. That's awesome. Um, now, what if I'm fighting a caster cleave? So say all these guys are casters. Say it's just two casters out here. <clears throat> and I want to kill them. So... Doing damage, right? Doing damage. And say this guy combustions or whatever. If I starfall, it hits him right here. But if, if I line of sight, 
My Starfall no longer hits him. Those are shooting stars hitting him. Come back in line. Hits him a little bit and then it faded. So, basically, if you Starfall into a wizard team, you can't get any value because you have to play in like their line of sight the entire time. You see? You just have to play in their line of sight the entire time. And that can just get you killed because Boomy dies to wizard cleaves pretty easily. Like, if you don't line of sight, you're just going to get shredded. So, you generally don't want to run Starfall into a Caster Cleave. If it's a bridge map or a very small map, then maybe it's fine. Um, but, yeah, you don't really want to run it into a Wizard Cleave. Um, or even just one Wizard. Sometimes it's just really bad. So, the damage rotation with this build, though, what you're going to do is you're going to keep your dots up. Starfall, Fury Valoon, Incarn, spam your dots. See, so yeah, I'm just like spamming dots and then I'm just doing my um, my Star Weaver. I'm just going back and forth. And when I don't have a proc, I'm just going with Starfall every time. Starfall every time I don't have a proc. We're just spamming dots. Now, in RBGs, this will do so much damage. Um, I can't drop combat, so this damage isn't very accurate. I'm not doing 90k DPS. I'm doing a lot more than that. So, this build, all you're doing is dotting. And, yeah. And also, if you have your Warrior Balloon macro into your Fury Balloon, um, you can also make a Tell Me one for that, like I have. Um, we just wait a sec. And I'll leave Incarn. Starfire, Starfire. Now I'm in Eclipse, so since I use Starfire, my Sunfire is 12 Astral Power. My Moonfire is still 6. So I want to just be spamming Sunfire. And then as soon as I enter Incarn, then I can hit either one of them. It doesn't matter. But whatever Eclipse you're in, that's the dot you need to be hitting for your Stellar Innervation to give you the bonus AP. I have like 4 Dragons out right now. It's pretty crazy. And I'm going to Starfire again. And, yep, we're doing Sunfire again because we are in Solar Eclipse, because we use Starfire. So we're just using Sunfire here. And, yeah. Depending on what Eclipse you get into is, like, what dot you're going to use. If you use Wrath here, then I'm going to be using Moonfire. But I just proc Incarn again. So, you proc Incarn basically every other Eclipse. So, that's why this build is crazy. You're just spam proccing Incarn. You're just getting so much AP from Solstice from your Incarn procs. You're getting crit from this. It's just so much damage. It's insane. So insane. And honestly, Bounce of All Things isn't worth here because you don't really overcap on AP because you're just spamming your spenders the whole game and just running it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that is the builds. Um, some of the gear I'm running, I am going... I'm going this Mastery thing on my ring. This gets about 30 to 50% uptime in Arena, so it's like having a couple extra sockets on. It's nice. And you also get a second Haze first ring. Um, I'm also running Precog on the gloves. You won't run Tear Set on the gloves. You're going to run Tear Set on every other piece of armor. Um, and it doesn't really matter which armor piece you buy. Just like buy whatever with your Conquest. It seriously doesn't matter. You're eventually just going to get geared. Um, and the four set will be worth it. Let's see here. Is there anything else? Go Night Elf. Night Elf is just the best race. Um, and yeah, basic basic strats and solo shuffle is... Um, one thing that ha has changed is if you're playing with the Discipline Priest, you actually want to run it down. Like you want to... Like most of the time you actually want to run into the enemy team and try to like kill them. Um, unless the enemy healer is also a Discipline Priest. Because generally, Disc Priest cannot heal Boomies and Dampening. So, that's like one little tip in solo queue. Is if you're playing with a Disc, you actually just run it. Um, it if it doesn't look like it's working out when you're running it down mid, um, then don't. But generally, you're going to lose later on. Because the Disc Priest just can't heal a Boomie and Dampening. You just take so much damage. Um... And yeah, that's basically it. I'll just do the burst again real quick. Pre-surge. 
Fury Valoon, Incarn, Double Surge, Starfire Surge, Starfire Surge. I'm not running the right build for the single target burst, but that's basically it. Um, and then also Starfall can't go through pillars, so that's good to know. If you have a bunch of stacks of them up, like they're just all going to be wasted if you line. So that that is the downfall of the AOE build. Um, let's see here, is there anything else? Is there anything else, boys? It's a very long video. I normally don't do a guide this long. Um, let's see here. What else is there? Some comps? Honestly, it doesn't matter what you play right now. Like, <clears throat> I've seen Boomy BM Hunter work. I've seen Boomy Enhance, Boomy DH, Boomy Ellie, Boomy SP, Boomy Demo, Boomy Destro, Boomy Sub. So many things work. It's insane. Literally insane. Um, so many comps work. Like, you can literally play anything, and it's probably a viable comp. One other thing, actually. This is my RMP loadout. So this is what I'm rocking into RMP. Um, you want to rake stun the mage and then you want to ink up or as many targets as possible. Generally, when somebody gets sapped, that is exactly when you want to press your dash. So as soon as somebody gets sapped, you want to dash and then rake the mage and then ink up or as many people as possible. Um, you can also restealth if, if uh, they've gotten all your trinkets from your team, you can restealth and just rake the next opener. So that's the RMP build. Um, also another tip is if you're fighting melee, so like everybody asks, how do you survive melee as a boomy? Now, boomy actually counters melee and I didn't realize this until like a little bit later on. Like I just wasn't good at boomy. Um, but for melee, you should be wild charging, typhooning, rooting off cooldown, right? You're doing that all off cooldown. And when they connect to you, you can bear form, regen on a pillar or whatever. Then you can cyclone them if it's possible. If you can't get a clone, that's fine. If you, if you can, though, if you do get a clone, then you wild charge to another pillar and you keep doing damage. One thing that's really key is if you're just kiting, you're going to die. If you're just doing damage, you're going to die. You got to do both at the same time. Um, you can't just do one. If you just do damage, you just kite, like one or they, they just won't work. You gotta do both. Um, another thing is when you're kiting melee, if you fight like a DK especially, if they press A-bomb limb, you just stampeding roar and you run away you, while you're regening and you're stampeding roar, you need to look for typhoons, roots, and leaps. Typhoons, roots, and leaps, all right? Leap, leap to your teammate, like leap out to a pillar or something then line of sight the DK grips and then heal up. And then as soon as you're healed up, if they're not going you, you peek back in to look to cyclone them, root them, typhoon them, you know, the little three combo we got right here, root, typhoon, cyclone, ball charge. Um, I guess that's four, but don't, don't clone them if they're going you. If they're not going you, then clone them. But if they are going you, then just kite them infinitely. Like, don't don't worry about melee that are don't worry about cloning melee that are training you unless it's just a free clone or it's like a last resort thing. Um, and then here's my twos build. So my twos I got like a I got a pretty fat win rate in my twos, and I'll show you the build I'm running. Uh, it, it's actually crazy. <clears throat> so this is the build. Um, I go master shapeshifter, and then I go protector of the grove. So basically what we're doing here is we got a one minute convoke. We have just a normal single target damage. You could probably switch some of this stuff around. This, this build might be a little outdated because I am intensity here and soul the forest. You could probably like fill out this left row and drop like soul intensity, armor breaker. There could be some like stuff you could do to this to make it better, um, potentially. But on the left side, we have rake, we got Heart of the Wild, well Honed Instincts. We got a lot of good stuff. Um, and basically, the way I'm playing twos is I always play with the DPS. I'm always playing with the DPS, right? And what I do is we do our opener. I get dots out, right? I'm doing damage. I send my incarn really early. I do, I'm doing my burst, right? I normally don't pre-surge. I mean, unless they just give me a lot of distance. Um, I do that. 
if it's a like melee team or a stealthy team i'll go in with like a rake stun and i'll like get them going um i'll break them dot dot fury balloon semi burst go like that um you got to send your burst really off really really early and often and then also you just never let them hit you because if they hit you you're the squishiest target actually you're the squishiest target on the team so if they go you you just run as fast as you can typhoon root wild charge get away and then do damage while you're doing that and then as soon as they go your teammate you have the most heals in the world like i'll, I'll show you the heals real quick your heals are actually insane um even without heart of the wild you can heal for so much as this build so if i go up here i'm just gonna drop off real quick so if I do a non hard the Wild Convoke, it might heal other people around me. It didn't, but it just instantly tops me. Um, I'll do that again, and I'll show you my regrowth cast. And that was without Heart of the Wild. With, with Heart of the Wild, it's just, you will not die. You literally will not die. And basically, I'm taking games to like 70% dampening because I just won't die. If they ever go you, you just run away because they can kill you because you can't cast when they go you. So if I Heart of the Wild... And then I send a regrowth here with Swift Mend. It's like half my HP or more. And I can just throw a rejuve or whatever. I still have renewal, double regen. It's pretty insane. And if I bark skin, I get 20% additional healing from my Verdant Heart. So if I want a ton of healing, I'll just pop bark skin and then regrowth Swift myself, Swift Mend myself, bark skin up. And if my HP scaled down, that was like nearly 150k. And I don't even think that crit. Yeah, 150k, 133k non-crit right there. So if that crit, that'd be like my whole HP bar, basically. It's it's insane. You have Bark Skin up while you're healing. Um, so yeah. You just run away if they go you in twos. Um, you try to play in it, it. You try to play as aggressive as you can. But at the end of the day, you got to be high HP so you can keep your teammate alive as well. So they can't just swap you. Um, so yeah, that's my twos build right here. And I always go Master Shapeshifter and Protect of the Grove with this. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Um, little tips and tricks. Some people might already know this, but if you're in a 1v1 situation, right? You're fighting like a mage in a 1v1. A uh, little strat you can do is if they're running around a pillar and you just can't do any casts on them, you can't get into Eclipse, your best damage rotation is Rake, Dot, Dot, Dump your surges, right? Say I just can't get any casts off. Just keep doing that. Your damage. And you can like rake. Like do damage like this. You can actually like utilize cat form a little bit. Um, if you're attacking a mage who's just line of sighting the whole time. Because assuming you have to go cat to like catch up to him. Um, so there's that. And then another thing is you can auto attack through pillars. The very big ones like Tolveron, you can't auto attack through. But we'll wait for some of these dots to fall off here and I'll show you attacking through pillars. Um, you can attack fairly far through some pillars. Um, I'll show you right here. So I can attack from here through the pillar. Obviously I can't wrath, right? I can't wrath, no line of sight, but I can attack through here. See how far out I can get. Yeah, so I can attack from here. So if you're trying to keep a rogue, on Blade's Edge, you can attack through the Blade's Edge floor. You can also attack up through the Blade's Edge floor. Um, you can attack through the Blade's Edge stairs. You can attack through a lot of pillars. You can attack through the Black Rick Hold gate. Um, yeah, so this is a little handy trick. Um, one thing I want to show you as well is with this trick, if you're worried about drinks, so like how do you stop a drink as a boomy? Um, so if you're trying to stop a healer drinking as a boomy, say like this dude's the healer and say I'm like 30 yards out that way. Say I'm like quite a bit further out that way. If I'm trying to stop that healer from drinking behind the pillar and he's out of stealth, the best thing I can do is auto attack him, go back and boomy and keep killing an enemy team. So you just auto attack and you keep going. Cause if you go all the way over here, like normal, like you run over here, you're out of form. What do they do? They bash clone you, and then you're just here, and then you get recloned, and then you get recloned, and it's just two DPS versus your dying teammate, and then you just lose the game. So, auto attack, and then you go back and keep doing damage, keep an eye on them. That's what you want to do. 
Um, additionally, if it's Mugambala or Robodrome, a lot of the... If, if you want to stop drinks, you can combine a Wild Charge with Flap. Um, so you can get some extra distance. A lot of the arena maps, like people are, people don't normally have Flap and it's actually like, it can win people a lot of games. So you definitely want to have Flap. The way you can get Flap is over here. Uh, no, over here. No, not Mount Hydel. Right here. There's a vendor here. Don't exactly know where, but somewhere in here, in this little area, there is a vendor and you can buy the flap ability. And then once you got it, you got it. And you can just, it's off GCD. Um, one thing I get asked about a lot is, do you macro that with wild charge? And the answer is no. So say you're trying to catch somebody and they run around this pillar and you have flap macroed in your wild charge. All right. Um, yeah, what? Okay, never mind. Never mind that quest. Say somebody's going around that pillar and you have, you like actually miss your wall charge. Like, what if you just do this? Now you're just like, now you can move around. Like, it's, you kind of just sit here for like a second and a half and that CC, like, that you're doing to yourself kind of sucks. You can hit escape to cancel it, but generally you just, you just don't want to macro that. Like, some, sometimes you just need that wild charge. You don't need the flap. Like the flap is just too far. You might land into like a ring of frost. You might hit a ring of fire. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not worth it. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh yeah. Make sure your frenzy regeneration is outside of bear form. So this is a bad, I'll show you bad, bad UI. This is bad UI here. This is terrible UI. This is just bad UI. If you have this here though, doesn't matter where it is on your bar, make sure you can see frenzied outside. Cause this is a, it doesn't heal for that much now, but it's fairly significant and increases your healing taken. So you wanna know when this is off cooldown. You don't wanna last resort go, go bear form and then just not have a regen where instead you could have just like ran around a pillar and like cast it a regrowth. Um, another thing, your bash beam combo. All right, here's, here's your, Bread and butter for Boomy. If you're fighting a Discipline Priest, a Holy Priest, this is your bread and butter, boys. All right? Go single target here because this is when you're really going to use this. You use this in twos a lot. Anytime you fight a Priest, really. Um, this, is, this, is your, this is your burst combo to, like, bash beam kill somebody. Double dot. All right? Double dot. Make sure you're, like, 80, 80, 80 Astro Power or so. Double dot. Pre-Surge. Shroom, Fury Balloon, Bash Beam, Incarn, Surge, Surge, Starfire, Surge, and hopefully they die. There's a pretty good chance that 100 does somebody. If it doesn't 100 does somebody, you can root, and then while that root breaks, you'll bear and wild charge them into that solar beam, and it'll stun them for an extra like three seconds for them to die to your Fury Balloon and your, your triple dots on them and your Shroom. So you got a lot of stuff ticking while you're doing those roots. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's it. I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments. It's, it's a pretty long video. Um, yeah, just leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry, it's such a long video, but I just want to make sure you guys had everything you really need. All right, peace out, boys.